Hello, Michael. Hi. Uh, I can see you've got a shoe. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, you are currently working on a project, and I've just barged in into this rehearsal room. Um, piece called, is it called Stuff? It's called Stuff, yes. It's yeah. It's a production between uh, Women in Theatre and the Birmingham Rep. Um, and it's about. Um, Stuff. Amongst many other things. Yeah. I'm it's just looking. I'm just looking, yeah, and I, I can see that you've got loads of prop items around, uh, which is all to do with hoarding. What's your particular role in this piece of theatre? Um, Dennis from Women in the Theatre approached me because she was interested in exploring the subject matter um, using the objects. So I'm here as a puppeteer, and we're doing object manipulation, which means using the skills of the puppeteer but not the puppets. So we're using the skills of puppetry to animate everyday objects, hopefully in extraordinary ways, to help um, tell a story and reflect aspects of Anna's character back at her. So you, you literally, as you say, there's an object, a newspaper, uh, a shoe, you bring it to life? That's right, yeah, yeah, yeah. We bring it to life, um, so we're using sort of breath and focus and things like that. Mm. Um, so like a, obviously a classic kind of puppet, might, you might have a hand in the mouth. Um, so little movements like that um, can convey hopefully kind of a sense of sentience and um, emotion. And then obviously the audience co-collaborate by kind of projecting what they think the objects are feeling onto the objects. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. So there's a lot of interpretation in that sense. I think so. Well, like, as we would with anyone, as we move through the world, we meet people and we kind of get a feeling for what we think they're thinking or feeling. Mm -hmm. But obviously, that's all our own projected experience, and it's the same with puppetry. Is this a narrative that has been written already, or is, are you still are you, you're devising, or kind of based on real stories? Yeah, so Janet's worked a lot with um, self-identified hoarders and the professionals to support them. Uh, and just spoke to them about their lives, really, um, how it's impacted their lives, um, what have they been able to change things they wanted to change, and just um, to kind of develop an understanding of a subject that's non-judgmental, compassionate, comedic, um, and hopefully very human. And it's a space where a lot of sort of things seem to meet um, in terms of our relationships with objects, um, the companionship of objects, the tyranny of objects, uh, and capitalism and how we're constantly assailed all the time by this need to, or we're being told to consume, um, and the effect that that has on some people. What are you hoping that the, the audience take away from it, apart from a fantastic performance, which I go to that saying? <laughs> um, I think it opens a space to talk about a subject that some people find quite shameful, but I think we're all on it somewhere. You know, whether you're a minimalist who's got nothing in your house, or at the other end of the spectrum, you might be someone who would be categorised as a hoarder. And there's a whole load of space in between ways that we um, distract ourselves if we're feeling emotionally uncertain. We might go out and spend money. And it's a bit of a compulsive behaviour, and suddenly you come back home and you're like, "Why well, can't I buy this stuff?" Um, so we're sort of examining that really and trying to pull it out into the light a bit because sunlight's the best disinfectant and, and helps get rid of shame and we can sort of go, actually this is a subject that, it's not just the, the hoarders over there, but it's something that affects all of us. Um, and rather than othering people with a condition, actually going, oh actually I can see aspects of my own self and things that I've struggled with in the journey of Anna's character throughout the show. Um, is it quite a serious piece or would you say that there's comedy within that? I mean, Janice, Janice's background's very, very comedic anyway, you know, with her playing the role of Barbara Nice generally. So does she bring that comedy element into it or is there... Yeah, she does loads of pathos. Janice is amazing. She's like a, a compassion engine, isn't she? She kind of pumps it out so you can feel what she's feeling. She's a great actress in that way. Um, and so sometimes it's very, very touching, achingly touching, and other times it's very, very funny. Um, and I hope, yeah, that, that with the subject matter and with the object manipulation should create a good night out. Do you, do you have any narrative yourself or is it yours just with the uh, object manipulation and playing, playing with all the objects? Um, I'm here to play with all the objects to kind of um, animate Anna's world. Uh, it's got a bit of a sort of, um, she's a bit like a Disney princess at home in some ways. Um, so you're the ghost? I'm the ghost, yeah. Yeah, perhaps in more ways than one. So, um, 
that's something we're kind of exploring in rehearsal at the moment is how explicit is the role of puppeteer within the piece and within and as well um, we don't know how that's going to go yet but come and see the show and you'll find out uh, what day is the uh, are the shows it's know? the week of the 15th I think we go up on a, I think a Wednesday night so week of 15th October and I think we're on Wednesday Thursday Friday and Saturday Thank, thanks a lot Michael no problem thank Hope you to see you there thank you